was reading the other day in the 24th chapter of St. Matthew. Jesus was discussing with his disciples the signs of the end, the signs of the times. We're faced with wars and famines and rumors of wars and earthquakes. And I just wonder if you're sure you got another building that's not made by hand. It's a long way back Once you get strung out Open your eyes up And look at your face It ain't safe to walk no more well, 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 well. Rape and murder behind every door Seems like people got the hate disease But they For mercy, please.
Hello, hello, hello. This is Elder Patillo once again endeavoring to inspire a desire in you to go higher in life by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Listen, that song there was recorded in 1978. I had not received the Lord in my life until 1981, Christmas, so-called Christmas Eve, 1981. But by the time I heard this song, I wanted to repent and ask God to save me all over again. Not that I had done wrong, uh, but... The song is just so powerful. The song is just so meaningful. And there's nothing around today like that. People are not singing songs to move people to want to repent and give their lives to God. People are not making a lot of songs that have a person inspired to get closer to God. This song was a song, I don't know, what the person was thinking, but people that heard it, it sounded like the person was crying out from their souls, crying out from down on the inside, crying out for that person that longs to be with Christ. Listen, powerful song. It talks about the soul and its longing to be with God after looking at the condition of the world today, after looking at what's going on at that time, and it's worse now. And if we understood the sacrifice that God gave that we might have a right to the tree of life, and we look around and see all the carnage and all the killing and all the hate, we look around and see our own misery because many are miserable today. I don't care how much sex. I don't care how much drugs. I don't care how much money. People are miserable. Why? Because their souls is not hooked to God. Their souls is not hooked to God. And that's what we're talking about today. The soul. Back to basics. We need to understand what's going on here. We need to understand how all this got started and what is the remedy for our souls. The remedy for the world is Christ, just like it is for our souls. But the problem is the world does not want Christ. The world does not want to accept Jesus. They want, they want Beyonce. They want Sam Smith. They want devil worship. They want to be out there having a good time. They want the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's what they want. Because it feels good, and you don't have to be accountable for that. You can just do your thing and, and make yourself feel good. But I know, because I've been out there before, I know that there's another side. I know that after you get through partying and after the drugs wear, wear off and after you send the woman home at 3 o'clock in the morning because when you picked her up, you knew that she didn't look like nothing, but you was trying to get off. So you picked her up and then you let out the house before anybody could see you with her. I know about that. After that's said and done, your soul is saying, I didn't want that. I don't want to be involved with that. Songwriter said, my soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. That's what people want. But they also want to fulfill the lust of his flesh. And they have a spirit in them that is hooked up with the enemy and thinks like the enemy thinks 
and is on a path to kill, steal, and destroy because that's what the enemy has placed in them, in their spirits. And so the soul is trapped. The flesh say, ooh, I want that. And the soul say, I don't want that. I want no part of it. But then the spirit say, hey, let's get it. And the soul and the spirit overpowers, I'm, I'm sorry, the flesh and the spirit overpowers the soul. So therefore, the flesh doesn't want God and the spirit doesn't want God in reality, but the soul does. So, we have quite a dilemma on our hands. There's a lot of people out there roaming the streets. There's a lot of people out there roaming the clubs. There's a lot of people out there gang banging. They're out there slinging dope. They're out there pimping. They're out there doing whatever they're doing. But deep down inside, some of them will let you know when I'm asleep or when I'm by myself at home trying to get some sleep. Sometimes I can't get to sleep because my soul, they may not know how to say it, but my soul is troubled because I don't want to be trapped in this. I don't want to be a slave to this. I don't want this to be my downfall. I don't feel good. Yes, I felt good when I took that cocaine. Yes, I felt good when I took that heroin, which a lot of people don't realize that they, they're not really getting heroin. They're getting fitting on, and it's killing people. I'm a drug counselor. I, 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 I see people dying, or I hear about people dying that I just talked to yesterday. There are people dying that I just counseled them and told them and warned them, and they still went out and, do, and did it. And they died because their spirit led them to do that because their spirit was weak. And then the flesh joined forces with the spirit or vice versa. They joined, they joined forces and that person's soul was damned to hell. It didn't have to be that way. It didn't have to go down like that. It didn't have to happen that way. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Listen, there were, when I was out there sticking up and stealing, there was pressure on me. There was a burden that I had to carry. I was just like I dearly departed. Lord, don't let me die like this. But my soul, that was my soul crying out. My spirit said, I need to get this money so I can feed my flesh. So my flesh can feel good. My soul, your soul, if you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, your soul is in prison and it can't get out unless your spirit changes. So instead of your spirit joining forces with your flesh your spirit will join forces with your soul and your soul and your spirit will develop the strength and the power to deny your flesh because your flesh is nasty your flesh is a freak your flesh is a beast and there's nothing in it that is good there's nothing in it that it will not do for pleasure. I shared with a woman last night. I said many people have problems. They have issues. They have situations where they are beginning to have or they develop mental health issues and problems. Because they start doing things or they've been affected by some things in the past that captured them and now they're walking around in guilt and shame what are you talking about there's some people because of trauma you heard me say it before as of 
abandonment issues and different things like that, molestation, they went looking for something to soothe the soul. When things like that happen, the soul is damaged. The soul is hurting. The soul is confused. But it always knows, your soul always knows that it wants God. But if you don't know, and if, you've, if you haven't given yourself to God, and you haven't heard the word of God, then your spirit can't do anything about it but remain dead. What do you mean dead? You're talking to dead people? Yes, spiritually. So the only recourse you have in life is to obey the flesh, and give the flesh what it wants because the spirit is in control. David said, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. Because he wasn't on his job, because he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do, he took a look at something else. He focused on something else and he lost the spirit of God. He lost his own righteous spirit that God had put in him. So he had to say, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. When our spirits are right, we can combat the flesh. When our spirits are right, we can deal with the flesh. We can deny it. We can shut it down. But the soul and the spirit has to constantly be fed the strength and the power. There's some people that's not saved and they do some great things in life. First, let me say this. Just because they're doing great things, that don't mean that they don't do things or they don't have problems or there are not certain activities going on behind the scene. And many times we find out about it after they die. But... The point that I'm getting to is a lot of times those great things are done because they believe in affirmations. They believe in going to seminars. They believe in going to uh, uh, webinars. They fly all over the country, even though they got money. They still fly all over the country when they hear Les Brown is talking to, or, or, or Tony Robbins or Eric Thomas. They still go to these people, even though they've already made their success. Why do they do that? Because they want to keep themselves on fire. They want to keep themselves going in the direction that they've been going in. And they get that by motivational speakers and writings and movies and, and all of those different things. The best way for a saint, a man of God, a person of God, a believer to keep themselves motivated is to stay in the word of God. And to continue to fast and continue to pray and continue to be around people that care about them and care about God more. This is how you maintain your salvation. This is how you maintain being what you said you were and what you actually endeavor to become. You have to maintain, just like an addiction, you have to maintain your sobriety. In salvation, you have to maintain your sobriety. And you maintain it by doing spiritual things. You maintain it by doing and, and, and behaving in ways that will not offend God. It will not offend the spirit of God. And when you do these things, they strengthen you. They make you powerful. They keep you on the right track. And so, we're talking about the soul. And as I read last week, it says in Genesis 2 and 7, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Man became a living soul. From the beginning, man has been a living soul. But somewhere along the line, they became fragmented. And now they are soul, they are flesh, and they are spirit. 
They weren't talked about being soul, flesh, and spirit until they made, until they did that sin or they disobeyed the commandment of God regarding eating from the tree. Okay? We'll cover that one day in depth. But we're talking about the soul because I want you to know what's going on with you and what's going on with other people. There's a battle. There's a war going on. And it's on the inside. There's a war coming, going on. It's down on the inside of you. And if you're not saved, you're not winning the war, war. And if you are saved, you still got to fight the war because the race is not given to the swift or neither to the strong, but him that fights to endure to the end. Being saved, you make mistakes. Being human and that flesh tries to raise up and, and, and sneak in on you, you're going to mess up especially earlier in salvation. But once you get into this thing and let God empower you with his word, let him empower you with his, his, his spirit, let him empower you with knowledge on what to do and what not to do, knowledge about what's going on around you. A lot of people don't know what's going on. A lot of people don't know what's happening. Even a lot of so-called Christians don't know what's happening. I was thinking, I've been hearing it because I didn't see it, didn't have an interest in seeing it, but I, I heard about the, the Grammys the other last week or whatever week, and then heard about Beyonce's concert. And... I heard about this lady that was rebuking Christians for going to the concert. Now, or being at, at uh, the Grammys. I don't know which one it was. Did they do both? I don't remember. I just heard a little bit of the lady speaking. I don't know if she, she was talking about both entities or both situations. But she was saying a saint, a Christian, wouldn't be there. They wouldn't have been there. And then if they had been there, when they came out, they would have cried out and said something against what went on. But people don't, people are blind to what's going on. And let me tell you this. The reason why I know that they're blind to what's going on, well, actually two things are going on. One of the things is when you go on some of these other platforms, there's people that'll pop up like TikTok or something, and they'll pop up. And you got people upset at the people or they're upset at the woman that rebuked the Christians. You're supposed to show love and you're supposed to just pray for them and you can't judge them and you can't talk about them. And why do, she, one person was saying, why do the sisters always come against the sisters and, and, and the church is a place of love? That's what they're saying. And some things they're saying has some validity. But what does the scripture say? And this is what I'm saying. Either people don't know the scripture or they refuse to follow the scripture. But some of the excuses that they have, listen, you if you are a saint, you, if you know that a person is getting ready to put on a performance and they call it unholy, you don't, you don't want to be there. Because they letting you know what it is. And then if you're talking, if you go going to a concert and some woman stands up and they start, her and her, her entourage start praying to Father, Mother, God, you don't want to be there. Because that's not the God of the Christians, so-called. But people don't care what the Bible says. Now, some of them people, their souls let them know. Their soul let them know you shouldn't have been there and you should have cried out. But their spirit and their flesh overcome their soul. So they justify being there. This guy come out in a, in a suit. Now we know it's not, we ain't seen the devil. But he come out in a suit representing Satan. 
and, and call the performance performance unholy and we supposed to be there I wouldn't have been there and if I had because I didn't know what was gonna happen or something when I came out I couldn't wait I wouldn't have waited to get to Facebook or YouTube or TikTok or something because I would have cried out because people don't understand there's a war going on and it's a war for the soul listen I listen to some Secular music. Because I'm a married man and I like love songs. So I don't see anything wrong with it. Especially those that's not really talking about sex and all that. It's talking about love. That's what the music I came up on. Yes, some of it was, you know, Marvin Gaye, Let's Get It On. We know what he's talking about. But My Girl, Temptations, you know, uh, some, very, some other songs. What Love Has Joined Together. Uh... Listen to a song last night that I love, and it's my testimony, but it's by a group called The Impression. Finally got myself together. Now I know just who I am. That's my theme. And I know that God did that. In the song, he talks about places I used to go, I don't go no more. Things I used to do, I don't do no more. Love that song. Little smoke and a little drink. Had, had my head bad that I couldn't think. But love came along late one night and I finally see the light. That's the kind of secular songs that I would listen to. Another song that was DJ, DJ Rogers. Love brought me back. He might have been talking about a woman. But for me, that was God. Because God brought me back. But I'm not listening to nothing talk about unholy. I'm not listening to nothing that's this this overtly sexual and definitely nothing that's talking about the demonic forces of darkness and I'm not listening to no songs talking about church girls and trying to let church girls know that we understand and just do your dance and do your thing and, and all of that that's just telling so called church girl go ahead on and be a sinner because it's alright the war is on and the war is about the souls of men and women and children. David said, after he had been through some of the things that he had been through in Psalm 23, in the third verse, he goes down to talk about the soul. He says, he restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He restored David's soul. Some people, your soul has never been in the right place but God wants to restore it it was in the right place when we were children or when we were first brought into earth but we were still born and shaped in iniquity and so as we begin to grow our souls begin to become bound in sin which is the spirit and the flesh. But listen, there is a way out. David said this, also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good, and he that hastens his feet sinneth. In other words, if the soul, the soul, let me read it again so you know. Then shall the, I'm sorry, also the soul be without knowledge, it is not good, and he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. In other words, if I don't know what's going on, I'm not going to hasten with my feet and run to see what it is. Because I don't have any knowledge. And I can get caught up. And if I do that, I will get caught up. I remember years ago, I was standing outside my friend's house. You know, I had become family with them, so you know, we was we we call ourselves brothers and sisters. And I'm standing outside talking to this woman, and my partners run up to me, and they used to call me Blue at the time. Blue, Blue, come on, man, come on. I don't know what's going on, and my soul definitely don't know what's going on. But because I done committed myself to these people, as these my family. This is my family. So we I'm going with them. Finally, I done lost it. I, the, 
the girl, she, you know what I'm saying, she gone, so I done blew that. So let me get down here and see what's going on. Get down there to the other end. These people, my friends, they, first thing I see is the, the, the girl, one of the girls in the family, I see her on top of a man stabbing him with one of those hot dog forks. Okay? I'm like, man, what's up? So then I look around and a guy run towards me. But these are older guys now. You know, I'm in my 20s. Matter of fact, I might have been just 20 or 19 or something. And the guy runs up. So, you know, I do my little thing. Bip, bip, bop, bop. You know, he, he, he done. He turned around and run away. Then I look around at one of the other brothers. He done pulled out a pistol. And he trying to shoot this guy. And, and one of the, the family members grabbed him. And he almost killed this guy. So we hear the police coming, so I grab up the little girl because she got polio, you know, and uh, she don't walk that fast. So I grab her up, and we run back down to the house. So I'm like, hey, what's happening? What, what is all this about? I don't even know what's up. They got mama. They got mama. What you mean they got mama? They got mama. So I'm like, what, what happened then? Uh, knock on the door. Who is it? It's me. Who is it? Mama comes in. Like, what happened? What happened? Mama said, I don't know. We met some people down there, some men, and they wanted to get a drink. And uh, we got a drink and we went up to their house and we drank wine. I mean, we drank alcohol, whatever it was. Long story short, the daughter... She's kind of cute, but the mother was cuter. And they went down there to the liquor store and they met these guys and the, the guys had no interest in the daughter. So they took the mother and evidently they, they didn't do nothing to her because she came down and, you know, maybe the reason why, they, maybe they didn't get a chance because the, the boys went down there before I got down there real good. They was, they was going in the house so the men was running out. I guess that's what happened. And uh, the woman, she's like, no, we, they didn't do anything. We just had a drink. And so we look at the sister, and I don't know what happened. I don't know. I don't remember what happened after that. But what I'm telling you is the scripture here talks about uh, also the soul be without knowledge. It is not good. And he that hastes with his feet sinneth. So if you don't have knowledge, that's not good. And if you run and, and, and check on things just because the crowd went that way, you sinning. That's sin. Why? Because you could be running into something that you have no knowledge of. And when you see that it's a lot of excitement and there's a lot of, uh, it looks like it could be something violent and you run into it with no knowledge. But see, when you're in the spirit, the spirit and your soul will speak to you and say, don't go. Flesh will be hyped. Man, let's go see what happened. But the spirit and your soul will be saying, don't go. But we don't have that when we're not saved. Okay? So, as we go on, I want to read something for you. David said in one, one scripture, he said, as the heart panteth after the water brook, that's 42, 1 through 2, Psalms 42, 1 through 2. As the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee. O God, my soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? This man wants God. This man wants God. He says, as my as the heart, like a deer or something that's been running, that's been been chased by a lion or, or, or a leopard, and he gets to the water, and he's drinking the water. But while he was on his way to the water, his heart was panting after the water. He was thirsty, he was dehydrated, and he had been running and running and running. There was a time when I was out there in the street, I had been running the street day in and day out. 
and my heart was panting after God, but I kept doing other stuff, trying to fill the void. I kept taking drugs, trying to fill the void. I kept drinking alcohol, trying to fill the void. But my soul, mm, my soul wanted God all the time. And sometimes I could feel it. And then, listen, when I heard the word at 13 years old, it was really rough. Because my soul felt something. And it was looking for that feeling every since. But I kept putting other stuff in its place. I thought having sex for hours and hours and hours could kill that feeling. I thought being drunk every day could fill that void. And if it couldn't fill it, maybe it would make me not pay attention to it. It was escapism. If I could be high, I can escape from this longing in my soul. If I could be on drugs, out of my mind, then God wouldn't be on my mind. But when I was sober, after I heard the word of God as a child, the rest of my life, I've been feeling God tugging at me, pulling at me. And I've been tugging and pulling on him. But my flesh, up to a certain point, up to a certain day in 1981, my flesh and my spirit control what I did. There's a war going on for your soul. There's a war going on for your spirit. Your flesh is not going to hell. Your flesh is going to go back down to the dust, not the ashes, because we didn't come from ashes. It's going back to the dust. And at a certain time, on a certain day called Judgment Day, we have to answer for everything that we did in that flesh. Even though that flesh won't be around. That same flesh, it'll be, listen, it'll be, it's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. People are going to be vexed. People are going to be upset. People are going to be angry at their parents for not telling the truth. There's people are going to be angry at preachers for not telling the truth. People are going to be mad. They're going to be out of their minds with guilt, shame, and hatred, and all the habits and all the things that they've done looking for God. They're going to still be looking for God. They're going to still be hurting from being abused and neglected and not accepting Christ where they can get over it. It's going to be an ugly scene. That's the war that's going on for the soul. Because once the soul is gone, that's it. Once the soul is gone, you can forget everything else. So, just want to share a couple more scriptures with you before we get out of here. Isaiah, Isaiah 26 and 9. It says, my soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. When your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. My soul yearns for you. My soul yearns. Some of you know you can't you couldn't put a you couldn't put a name on it or you couldn't explain it or you didn't understand it, but you know now that that empty feeling and that feeling of not being satisfied. You can't be satisfied because your soul has is disconnected from God. How are you gonna be satisfied and your soul wants to be saved? How are you gonna be satisfied if your soul loves Jesus? Your soul loves God. How? Listen, it's time to be saved. It's time to give your life to the Lord. He said in 143, this is David again, in 143, Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. 
for the for the, thy righteousness, for thy righteousness sake, bring my soul out of trouble. Bring my soul out of trouble. If I read that before, it seemed like I read it before, but it's not. Or if I have, that's real. As a, as we used to say back in the day, that's straight business. Bring my soul out of trouble. Bring my soul out of prison. But there's a scripture that talks about how that this poor man cried, this poor man cried, and God delivered him out of all his distresses. This poor man here, Elder Patillo, cried one day, and God delivered me out of all my distresses. Dope fiend. I have been a drug addict. I was one of the youngest dope fiends or drug addicts in the neighborhood. I was one of the youngest dope fiends. Alcohol, I had, I had, listen, I would, I, I drank with real alcoholics. I ain't talking about a person that had a drink every now and then. I drank with real alcoholics. Why did you drink with alcoholics? Because I was miserable. My soul was lost. And my spirit was full of the spirit of alcohol or alcoholism. Listen, I shot drugs every chance I could get. I was a person that from about 14 to, to 20, I was high just about every day, except for a couple a couple times when I tried to be saved. But if I wasn't saved, I was getting high every day. I remember going to high school and they would they would call me "Oh, cool blue." The cool blue is the coolest guy in this whole high school. Blue was drunk or high. I wasn't getting staggering drunk at that time, but I was drinking every day. Drinking stuff called, uh, what was that? Richard's Wild Irish Rose, 14, 15 years old, drinking that. Drinking Seagram's Gin and Coke. Drinking Bacardi Rum and, and Seven Up. I go back and forth, wine, then whiskey. White court, white port and Kool Aid, Thunderbird and grapefruit juice, white uh, uh uh Lightning Creek. Then I go do some vodka and orange juice. I was a drunk. I was messed up. But God, who is rich in mercy, He saved me. He called me, and He cleaned my spirit out. And our souls connected. And I've been there. I've been here. It's been 43. I'm sorry, 42 years. Something like that. That I have not gone back. Did I fall? Did I mess up? A few times. That's possible though. But when your mind is made up, you get yourself back together. And you, a temptation had a song called Ride It Bareback. Get up on it and ride. Ride this thing out. Paul said, listen, the thing that I'm going after, the thing that I'm going after, I have not apprehended it yet. But here's one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark of the high calling. Why? Look what God has done for me. Look how God has kept my mind. Look how God has put me together, put me back together, gave me a wife, 39 years, gave me three children, gave me a career, and gave me a name. I have a name. 
What do you mean, Elder Patillo? My name means something to a lot of people. And I'm not bragging, but I'm saying to be a person that came from where I came from. Shooting dope in alleys and, and, and picking up cigarette butts to smoke. All that type of stuff. Burglaries and, and penitentiary and all that type of stuff. For me to have a name that's honored and for me to have a name that's respected in my community. Listen. Because of God, because of God, understand what I'm saying? Not because of me, but because of what God put in me, my reputation is clean now. My reputation is clean. Curtis Mayfield wrote a song and said, I'm, I'm so glad I got my own, so glad that I can see my life is a natural high. No man can put no finger on me. My people that I minister to in terms of drug addiction, they never did have to worry about seeing me in the club or seeing me at the dope house after they saw me that morning teaching them about drugs and alcohol and how to get clean. They didn't have that problem. They they didn't have a, they haven't had a problem with me, with them telling me something, and I went and told somebody else. They haven't seen me smoke a cigarette. They haven't seen me drink any alcohol. My family haven't. Nobody has. Why? Because God changed my life and gave me a new name. A good name is more than money. A good name is more than clout as far as popularity and how many is concerned. Why? Because God came in and changed my life. And anything I have, everything I have, he gave it to me. Or he allowed me to get it. And I thank God for that. I thank God that I don't have to be in competition with anybody. I thank God that I'm not racing against anybody. I thank God that there ain't nobody chasing me. But the devil and some people that don't like me, but that's okay. That's going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Everything worked together for the good, according to them that I call. Those that I call according to his purpose. Everything works together for good for them. So I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the message. I would like, if possible, which I know it is, but I would like you to, when you see the video, hit the like button, share it, uh, let other people see it. That's if you like what's being said. If you don't like it, then, you know, do what people do that don't like it. But those that like what they heard it's a war going on for your soul in Jesus name we thank you father for being so good so kind and so gracious asking you to touch somebody's ears asking you to touch somebody's heart that they might cry out to you Lord 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 what must I do to be saved as a matter of fact as the song that started off the video says Bless somebody, give somebody the strength and the courage to cry out, Save me, Lord! Save me, Lord! In Jesus' name, we thank you right now. Thank God. Amen. That's it. I don't know what we're going to be talking about next week or next in the next couple of days, uh, but I'm waiting on God to give me that message. So until then, I'll see you. Peace.